Hey guys, what's going on? Justin Masson here with Nintendo Dads, and today we're going to be doing a first impression let's play of Hobbs, the, or sorry, Hob, the Definitive Edition. I apologize for that. And this game is from uh, Runic, uh, is part of the development team. And as part of the port over, Panic Button uh, was involved with that as well. And Perfect World. So a lot of uh, fantastic people jumping in, fantastic companies jumping in to help uh, Hob come to the Nintendo Switch. Of course, Panic Button, well known for their port of Rocket League um, and Warframe not too recently uh, to the Nintendo Switch as well. Now, Hob is, is a new game to me, um, so I'm excited to jump into it. Now, I, I'm going to be fully um, honest with you here. What, your cat, what I'm showing you here is actually about the first 15 minutes of the game. You have two options, def, uh, Definitive and Classic. I'm going to go with the Definitive uh, choice here because they said this is the Definitive Edition, so let's use that option. But I, um, I've i played quite a bit of Hob, and what I'm showing you today in this kind of preview, this first look, is actually the first 15 minutes of it, uh, which I think is a great kind of opportunity for you to jump in. First and foremost, we've got this, this kind of uh, character... Uh, organic robotic creature uh, that we're, we're kind of meeting here who's opened our door and here's our here's our definitive character uh, right here coming into the, to the light of it one of the first things that really stood out for me with Hob is I love the art style first and foremost this kind of metallic uh, robotic stone organic kind of, of environment and look really appealed and really kind of uh, spoke out to me um, I thought it was very very cool so we're getting some just kind of first kind of runs around this environment and grounds here using our ZR to sprint I'm right now I'm playing this by the way on a Nintendo switch pro controller uh, is how we're playing it so we're just kind of going, going around it looks like some kind of deer or fauna to the left there I like this kind of um, shell shell cell shaded look going on here we've got our, our our friend here pointing here i don't really know what this is Do i have to jump in this or or what's going on a little bit of frame stutter there as i'm jumping i don't know if it's a portal or something um fyi i i, I do know that this is actually a save point at this point during my first playthrough wasn't too sure what that was exactly but i'm going to follow uh, our kind of our big our big lumbering friend here who appears to kind of be providing some direction now here is one of the things i would say about hob if you're oh we got you know, land, um, ran into some kind of disease or something there. Um, one of the interesting things about Hob is there is no real direction. And what I mean by that is there's no um, story cues in relation to actual audio. Like, you know, there's no voiceover. There's no um, dialogue that comes up on the screen that tells you here's where you have to go. Here's what you have to do. Um, it is all provided with action. Right, whether someone's pointing a certain direction. Now there is a map that I'll show you, I believe a little bit later, that does provide some waypoints, but not a lot of, of direction. There's definitely a language and a, um, oh, what's going on here? Not only just a, a, a you know, uh, I'm just pausing for a quick second here. Um, I'm just gonna recheck re something, bear with me, do, do, do. Um, but there is definitely kind of this 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 language that is built that we don't know uh, the language of of, uh, of this world, but there's definitely something going on there uh, for sure. But we so what I'm saying there is that if you need very defined direction, as in here are my audio cues, here are my dialogue cues, here's where I need to go, you may struggle with this game a bit. It is a puzzle platforming game would be environmental environmental puzzle platformer would be the best way I would say so so obviously we're, we're kind of following our, our character here right now um, I will also say for my playthrough of it y you very quickly become hooked and addicted into this world now the challenge I would say at times as I mentioned before is there's no none of those audio cues there's no no defined like hey here's your waypoint direction arrow and you have to go find there and you have to get there and at times that can be a bit confusing and a bit frustrating because I'm not 100 percent sure I have, a, I have a direction that I'm kind of shown or a spot on a map I need to get to, but I don't know how I'm supposed to get there in any way. And I don't know uh, where I'm going, and I kind of run into a couple barriers here and there. And, uh, and, and so that, that caused me to kind of, you know, um, run circles around at times and kind of chase my tail, but eventually I kind of found my way. So if you get frustrated by, like, puzzle platformers or, or environmental puzzle puzzle platformers, Maybe a bit of a challenge game for you, but uh, if you just kind of work through it, it didn't take me too long to kind of solve where I need to go. But something to be aware of if it's if it's a challenge for you. Uh, we are getting some direction here. Oh, there we go. Climbed up here. 
the the fluidity or the movement of, of the character is actually quite easy and quite comfortable. Nothing feels too out of place. Um, one of the things I would say is that you can't really change the camera angle. So for some spots, like I know I have to jump here, but I'd love to see a better view of that jump, if that makes sense. Uh, same here, I need, I need to jump here. Uh, so there's a little bit of kind of, you need to be precise to kind of know exactly where you're landing. I'm actually gonna just double check, is this where I need to go? Take a run over here. Oh, wall, I can't go that much further. So that does not work for me. Oh, there's another barrier or another wall, so we're not gonna go that way. So we need to do a little bit of exploring to understand where we need to go to. Um, so it's a little, yeah, a little bit of your own kind of exploration, finding walls. So I'm finding, so this is a great example. I'm finding a lot of barriers that are blocking me from going these ways. So obviously I need to find a different way to go there. Probably uh, maybe go around this um, block again. Actually, you know what, let's see what we can do here. Don't you have any options for controls? Nothing in there that, uh, that indicates anything I need to be aware of. Let's have a little bit of a runabout, see if there's anything else I can find. Um, oh, there's an enemy over there, and uh, don't know how to get there yet, but that's okay. The world, as you begin to explore more and more, uh, does open up for you and reveal um, a lot more. And again, it's you begin to understand the story that's being told here. Again, we're not, we're not getting that from dialogue cues, we're not getting it from voiceover. We're getting it from animation, we're getting it from emotion, we're getting it from the emoting of the environment as well. And I think that's a huge story. And I think it reminds me in some way of um, Faye that came out last year on the Nintendo Switch. And that was from, uh, oh no, Thunderful Games? Thunderful? Image and Forum? No, uh, Zoink, Zoink Games, there it is. From Zoink Games. Um, and that idea of just kind of this lush environment that you are working in and you are trying to find peace and harmony and balance with. And, and there may not necessarily be the cues that you need to, to go know exactly where you're going, but you find your way. So very much that kind of idea as well. Now, Hob did come out on uh, other systems, or at least I know it was on the PC. I believe it was on other systems as well before this. But this is now its, its, uh, its addition to the Nintendo Switch. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, like, I'm really, really rather enjoying it here. Now, there appears to be some kind of big switch here that I get to activate. I don't know how I do that right now. What's going on over here? Oh, there's a rock. Let's see if there's anything to do with the rock. Let's see what's going on here. Let's go up this way. Here's our friend. We talked to him, we can't talk to him in any way. What is this way? Oh, look at that, it's like a big giraffe thing. Oh, cinematic cutscene is taking over here, so I'm not doing anything. Let's see what happens. It's kind of like a big elk giraffe thing. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. So again, kind of a, 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 an alien world, but very kind of cool. Love this cut, this, this, as we're pulling the camera back, we're getting a little bit more of an idea of, oh, what's going on here? Ah! Something has, has attached to my arm or bit me in some way. Um, our character does not seem to be doing well. Uh-oh, and our friend has come over and, uh, oh geez, now that's a sword and, all right. So now we are actually breaking into or cutting into our actual opening. So uh, again, the first almost 10 minutes of this has just kind of been a bit of a, uh, a setting the scene, getting us to understand, oh, there is my arm in a puddle of stuff. So I have just had my arm amputated and our rock creature friend who's been helping us is now carrying me away. Um, obviously these are probably some of the designers and production team that, that is associated with it. So that's a very so so that's kind of how we're starting off our uh, off our gameplay, setting the scene, getting us comfortable with the controls, and oh, he your man just your big friend just ripped his arm off. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, I think it might be for you. All right, and here is a kind of our opening opening scene, very kind of cinematic, kind of set the stage again. About 10 minutes into it, we're jumping into Hob, the definitive edition on the Nintendo Switch. So we're waking up from obviously this instant. We've had our arm amputated. Oh, but look, there is still an arm. Boom, You're, we're a little bit shocked by this. Reminds me very much of, uh, of Hellboy actually, right? Like it's just that massive kind of stone, kind of organic, magical fist, doom fist arm thing he's got. So that's what Hob has got here. So obviously this kind of large, powerful um, 
weapon is going to come into play at some point as we interact with the environment as well. So that's pretty cool. I'm um, gonna be pretty honest. He looks pretty badass right now, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, hey, I'm all, I'm one with you know nature and and the environment. Help you, but by the way, I can also basically bust you up in one swing of my fist. So I'm kind of loving that so far. Oh, there we go. Actually, so we actually we've got a Y button there for hold. So our fist. Oh, hit hold. There we go. We're dragging. Okay, so now this is a little bit where our puzzle platforming. Um, aspects come into play here, so we can easily jump up here. There we go. Um, as I mentioned before, very much loving the the art style and the color palette that's associated with with uh, with Hob as well. Controls feel very good, by the way. Like nothing feels out of the ordinary. Um, just run around some more with my big doom kind of fist thing going on. Like I'm willing to bet you that this fist needs to punch some things to activate. Let's see what's going on here. So there's yes, yeah, so there's the YS. Yeah, so we learned how to do that. Oh, so this is a bit of an example of the camera being a little bit off. There we go. Jump up there. So that that camera movement, you can't do much with it. There's kind of our giraffe friend. Big jump, big jump. Let's go see what's over here. That's where we got poisoned before. That's no fun. Can I do anything with this? Not that I can see right now. Up on the left-hand corner, you can also see I have three kind of uh, red health bars. It looks like indicators. Oh, there we go. Pulling this rock out of the way. So I'll move it over here. Is there anywhere I'm supposed to move it to? Not 100% sure where. I'm gonna. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um. Okay. Let's actually put that there. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can use it, and I can use it to jump up there. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking with fire. Can I can I go in through here? Nope. Being blocked in some way. Okay. Let's not go in there. Let's come back out. Jump around. Jump around. Jump up. Jump up and get down. Let's see what we got going on. Alright, let's see. We move this over here. Do, do, do. Boom. Okay, we're up. We're moving. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, so these again are our save points. Oh, what's going on here? We've got some kind of... There is our rock guy, which I like. Let's go talk to him. And there's some kind of, like, uh, kind of person who maybe looks a little bit like myself. He's got, like, a sword, it looks like. Let's talk to him. Maybe take the sword. Is this the passing on of the sword to the to the player? Oh, and he kind of just melts away. Just kind of melted away. Yeah. All right. All right then, folks. That's interesting. Um, yeah. So that is that is great. Okay. <laughs> so let's see what we're what we're doing here. Uh, okay. What's what is this? Oh, I can activate something here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Cool. So now we are partners and we are working together uh, to do stuff, which I absolutely, absolutely love. Um, do, do, do. So a couple of things um, to know about this definitive edition. Um, of course, now as we mentioned, it is a single player um, adventure, uh, which isn't too crazy here. Uh, maybe something you could pass a controller around with and uh, with, with your child or whatever, but it's, it is a single player edition. There's no two player. Um, and it's uh, a couple things from the Nintendo Switch Definitive Edition. It does include actually additional camera controls and improvements to the, to the game's UI, um, a variety of quality of life improvements, and new features only possible in the Nintendo Switch system, which include in, um, HD rumble and touchscreen functionality. Um, so there is so there's some definitely um, some nice kind of improvements to to the game as well, uh, which is great. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it was out on other systems earlier uh, as well, um, but this is kind of, again, the definitive. And so we're, so it looks like we're forging weapons. Here's like, I think maybe our, our upgrade system potentially, maybe getting stronger weapons. I had to kind of forge this, and so now this appears to be my, my main weapon, which is very, very cool. It looks kind of a sword. I like that a lot. Nothing wrong with that, folks. Nothing wrong with that. 
I wonder if I can, like, reforge again. Nope, nope, not at all. Okay, do, do, do. Let's kind of run around a bit here. Uh, put our hand in this. This is where, obviously, we have the ability to upgrade, right? So we have sword combinations and shields and weapons. I don't have any currency to do that, but this is really where, you know, kind of the grinding of killing enemies um, allows for you to have different costumes or, or, or different outfits. Upgrades to your abilities and, and shields and weapons and moves. So there is a progression to the game as well, which is which is critically important. Um, I will say from my experience of it, as you progress longer, you get different powers for your hand that have different abilities. So it's really cool. Like there's this teleporting one that kind of jumps you all around, which is a really cool feature. Um, you get to build it. You know, it can also create it to its uh, shield. So there's a lot of kind of function and replayability for you to come back to to continue to explore um it's you know it's kind of like the perfect um kind of puzzle platformer right maybe you're on a long flight somewhere you're traveling you've got it with you pop in the earbud buds put it on and you are kind of off the races enjoying this world that you can very easily get sucked into um as you as you explore the environments around you and you're kind of always it has that hook where you always want to be pushing forward just a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to go to the next area, see how much further I can get. Um, the checkpoints are pretty um, pretty well found throughout the, the game, so you're never kind of at a loss to, to be saving. So that's really great as well. It's a really nice balance. Um, so so it's really, uh, I find it very engaging. Um, and and right, like right off the, the hop, the first day we, I got it, played for about uh, two and a half hours, just sat down and, uh, and, and played. So that was, it just kind of really grabbed me from the go. Uh, we're kind of exploring, again, some more of the ruins here uh, of the level. Um, again, love this kind of stone and, and metallic and, and uh, organic kind of um, scenario. There I did actually fall, I died, or I lost some life. There's a little bit of a checkpoint here. Let's take a moment here. Let's sit here and see what's going on. Hit the Y. Concept art unlocked. This is just a beautiful shot as it's pulling out, actually. Going to save this as well. Um, and uh, take a quick shot here. Uh, but yeah, just a beautiful kind of like, again, admiring the amount of, of detail and work that the production team has put into this. So, guys, this is, uh, this again, this is the first pre this is a preview of Hob. Hob hits the Nintendo Switch April 4th. Um, so that's this week. Uh, so it's on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Uh, big thanks to the development team uh, and the PR firm for handing us or sending us over a review copy. Again, if you like puzzle, um, environmental puzzle platformers, Hob is definitely worth your time and investment. It is a fantastic game. I'm really, really enjoying it, um, and I highly recommend you pick it up. Um, so, guys, thanks so much for tuning into Nintendo Dads. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this preview. Uh, again, guys, Hob is out April 4th, the Nintendo Switch. Highly recommend it. Um, it is a great environmental puzzle platformer. Thanks very much for tuning in to Nintendo Dads, and thank you so much for supporting everything we do here. Have a great day. Bye bye